Welcome back, everybody. We are in Val Rayo. It's been a little while. Uh, we've wanted to come here for a while. But uh, it was good to actually touch base with everybody and see... Well, get to know them a little bit, I would say. Uh, the avenue of her reflective thought. Our lady and the actors of her rise and fall. Her message and visage are worth repeating. Oh, there's like a whole bunch of these. It's free experience. Meaning a low door frame. <laughs> Mafrath's blood guilt beneath snatched by a vandal, and his head suddenly weighs too much. <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. An unrelated headache. <laughs> They're all in the same one. The avenue for reflective thought. The avenue is inspirational, but wise travelers do not linger in their respects. Not just because the bazaar awaits, but because the area before the back-turned statues is treacherous. Local legend has it that the child empress Amy abused the opportunity of religious re repose to relieve herself beneath the gaze of Our Lady. Unable to discipline the toddling leader, her attendants instead chastised the statues and had them turned into supposed embarrassment. True or not, foolish youths dare each other to soil the spot in similar fashion. And a place of otherwise reverent thought always carries a faint odor about it. That is disgusting. About his unfortunate hair. Look at this place. Respect to Duke Stefan of Valmontaigne. Good people of Val Royo, hear me. Together, we mourn our divine. A naive and beautiful heart silenced by treachery. You wonder what will become of a murderer. Well, wonder no more. Behold. The so-called Herald of Andraste, whoa, whoa, claiming whoa. to rise where our beloved fell. I'm not claiming anything. We say this is a false prophet. The Maker would say no elf in our hour of need. Okay, this is insane. I make no such claim. I wasn't sent here by Andraste or the Maker. I'm simply trying to close the breach. It threatens us all. It's true. The Inquisition seeks only to end this madness before it is too late. It is already too late. The Templars have returned to the Chantry. They will face this Inquisition and the people will be safe once more. Whoa! Whoa. Still yourself. She is beneath us. What is going on here? So you're not here for us. You're not here to deal with the Inquisition. As if there were any reason to. Lord Seeker Lucius, it's imperative that we speak with... You will not address me. Lord Seeker? Creating a heretical movement. Raising up a puppet as Andraste's prophet. You should be ashamed. You should all be ashamed. The Templars failed no one when they left the Chantry to purge the mages. You are the ones who have failed. You, who'd leash our righteous swords with doubt and fear. If you came to appeal to the Chantry, you are too late. The only destiny here that demands respect is mine. So why are you here? If you're not here to help the Chantry, then you just came to make speeches. I came to see what frightens old women so, and to laugh. But Lord Seeker, 
What if he really was sent by the Maker? What if... You are called to a higher purpose. Do not question. I will make the Templar Order a power that stands alone against the Void. We deserve recognition. Independence. You have shown me nothing, and the Inquisition less than nothing. Templars, Val Royo is unworthy of our protection. We march. That's not gonna be the last time I see him, I'm sure. Charming fellow, isn't he? Yeah, super. Has Lord Seeker Lucius gone mad? How well do you guys know him? Do you know him very well? He took over the Seekers of Truth two years ago, after Lord Seeker Lambert's death. He was always a decent man, never given to ambition and grandstanding. This is very bizarre. That's completely the opposite of we just of what we just saw, though. Is he somebody that will listen to reason? Do you think he can be reasoned with? I hope so. If not him, there are surely others in the Order who don't feel as he does. Either way, we should first return to Haven and inform the others. Wow, okay. So, they want us to go back to Haven. What else do we have going on here? We've got a few things. Let's touch base with the people around here and see what they think. Excuse me, but is what they're saying real? The Inquisition's going to fix the hole in the sky? Well, that's what we're going to try. We're going to give it a try, at least. No one is doing anything. The Chantry's useless, and the Templars... Andraste. I never thought they'd abandon us. Listen, your camp will need food. I have contacts. We'll have deliveries there in days. That's you awesome. want to help the Inquisition? Never been part of something this big before, but if your Inquisition's going to seal the sky, I want to help. Hmm. What do you think, Cassandra? I think the woman is asking you and not me. Well, he is. No, I'm not. The Herald of Andraste. Yes, I understand. Cassandra. Haven is a mess. But we won't turn away anyone willing to help. Invite her, if it pleases you. Alright. Go to Haven. Head to Haven, then. We need good people. An agent I is acquired, okay. That, but it will be nice to see. Thank you. There we go. Contact the Templars. That's gonna take Ever a while. Since our divine was murdered. What's Whoa! That? An arrow with a message? Where the hell? That is crazy. Emperor Florian, Grand Duke Florian, was not supposed to ascend to the Orlesian throne. His elder brother, Emperor Judicial II, had two twin sons and thus a very secure line. Florian was free to pursue other interests, none of which revolved around the game. Indeed, the Imperial Court largely ignored him, and that was how he liked it. All that he recorded, or all that is recorded of this era was that he was married, produced a single daughter, and afterwards showed little interest in her. An outbreak of the Hundred Days Cough in 877, Blessed changed his plans. Both of Judicale's sons perished, as did Florian's daughter. Racked by grief, Judicale lost interest in ruling, turning over all matters pertaining to the Rebellion and Ferelden to his advisors, and instead spending his time hunting in the country. When Judicale and, or was thrown from his horse during a fox hunt in 884, Blessed, Florian was... Oh, 884 Blessed, that's like... Okay, I see. Florian was suddenly vaulted into the throne. Famously, his response to the Chevaliers delivering the news at this estate is said to be, This will not do at all. A private and somewhat eccentric man, Florian limited his appearances at court and dealt almost exclusively with members of his own family. He was extremely particular about his habits of dress and grooming, eschewing current fashions for the sake of comfort, and refusing to wear cosmetics or powders of any kind due to an intense dislike of being dirty. Powerful and connected nobles who had served in the cabinet since his father's time were turned away in favor of his younger brother, Renaud, his sister, Melisande, and his cousins. Children were banned from the palace, even the children of servants, with the exception of his nephew and nieces, who were tolerated only on the condition that they remained out of the emperor's sight. Regarding suggestions that Florian and the youngest cousin, Megrin, were lovers, 
weird. The truth is uncertain. If such a relationship existed, it was no doubt kept private due to Florian's aversion to public life and not from any fear of rumors. Such rumors, after all, were likely to spread due to the Emperor's refusal to sire another child and thus secure his line. Many believe this failing would eventually lead to a civil war. The only real evidence of a relationship with Megrin is a loud and very public argument the two had prior to Megrin's appointment, or exile as he thought, saw it to the throne of Ferelden. Megrin is said to have called Florian my darling, and neither man chose to explain the argument later. The predictions of civil war almost came to pass upon Florian's death in 919 Dragon. With no clear heir, the throne eventually passed the only daughter of Grand Duke Renaud Selene after a vicious struggle that threatened to consume the Empire. That's cool. All this crazy history. Favors for favors for friends. Search by the docks, search in the cafe, search in the upper market. Large flowing hand and bordered with doodles. People say you're special. I want to help and I can bring everyone. There's a baddie in Valroy. Oh, I hear he wants to hurt you. Have a search for the red things in the market, the docks, and around the cafe, and maybe you'll meet him first. Bring swords. Friends of Red Jenny. A poor drawing of the locations in the market is attached. Okay. Let's see... Do we not... Well, we have enough herbs here in Haven. Ah, uh, here we go. Search by the dock, search in the cafe, search the upper market. My maker, know my heart. Take from me a life of sorrow. Comfort is only yours to give. Oh, maker, where is the comfort? Look away. I have broken the chant because it comes from my heart. What have we when our divine is dead and the sky burns? What do you mean by you broke the chant? What do you mean you broke the chant? Are you also ignorant of the Maker's most basic rites? The chant of light is how we honor the Maker. They are the only words that the faithful should hear from my lips. But I can't. Our divine is dead our templars gone the maker's silence is deafening what hope have we look why don't you just ask him for strength and hope that he gives it to you pray to the maker for strength not forgiveness have i not tried and raste maker show me your light take me back in faith i cannot find it on my own yeah, interesting. Okay, so these are areas we can travel from. I believe that m you are the Herald of Andraste, are you not? I have an invitation for you. You're cordially invited to attend my salon held at Chateau of Duke Bastien de Gislain. Yours, Vivienne de Fer, first enchanter of Montemissade, enchanter to the Imperial Court. Okay. For all matters, defensive concern, offensive intent, and study of arts martial and sanctional magic. Look I at this. I am open to you and yours. I price at a premium for everyone, so don't assume it's because you're with the Inquisition. I expect my customers to know a rarity when they see it. Just as I do. I like the sounds of that. I am open to you and yours. I price at a premium for everyone, so don't assume it's because you're with the Inquisition. I expect my... Okay, what do we have here? We've got a Light Taker Staff. Requirement level 13, so that's not going to be helpful just yet. We've got a Seeker Shield. Requirement level 9. Some armor. This stuff is pricey. Just realized. Any 
It's a little bit beyond us right now, I think. What, what about upgrades, though? Staff blade. Plus seven to constitution. Plus seven strength. Hmm. Some extra constitution could really help. What do the upgrades look like on our weapon right now? And we have an empty spot, but so we've got a grip and a blade already. But Solus does not. Solus is he's empty. So what about the pommel? We could get that, but... Hmm. I'm gonna pass on this stuff for now. Well, this has all been a frustrating mess. Templars and Chantry and especially the mages. Just everything. I apologize if you were refused service, but we are now open for business. Especially if you put my words to use. <laughs> okay. Let's see what you have now. This is a little bit better. A Fade Walker Staff. Plus 8 to Magic, plus 3 to Constitution and Crit. So I think for Solus, we might want to replace his weapon with one of these. Hmm, which one, though? This one's out of his level, so I guess we'll grab one of these rares. Fade Walker does electricity. And I think... The Dreamweaver here does fire. Plus three to constitution and critical damage bonus. Let's give him this. And what kind of upgrades do we have here? Nothing crazy. Level 7 again. We're a little bit off here. Okay. So, Solus, you've got yourself a new staff. Now let's investigate this arrow. This cannot stand. How can it stand? Yeah, that's a it's a great question there, noble citizen. We cheered when honored was her might, but many more deserve a thought, for though she was the first of a knight, her ken and kind have always fought. For those we stood beside. We should search the area. Ah. Thank you, friends, for helping good Lady Karis. Saw those who asked about Harold enter Third Passage. Could not stay to see them exit. Hmm. Find me. Thought of heroes, Mayfreth, and Sacrifice. Andraste, Our Lady, the sword and the fire against Devinter. Betrayed to the Empire in exchange for a kingdom. Maferath, now synonymous with treachery, but would... Andraste have won, and if not, what would have we have lost? Let us look not just at the act, but at the why of it. As the armies of faith pierced the Imperial homeland, it was revealed not as a wave, but as an arrow. And as any hunter will attest, if your aim is not true, there is no returning the bow. We must consider how much of Our Lady's victory to this point was against True Imperium, and how much was against the Echoes of Empire. Andraste, the inspiration, may have, or may not have considered su such, but Mafareth, the general, fought for Homeland, not Visions. Was it victory or defeat that his betrayal held at bay? Mafareth 
made the deal that killed our lady. That is fact, and when Andraste died, Maffrith was given everything from the Southern Plains south. How generous and impossible to hold this must have seemed. Let us look on Maffrith in the legacy he divided among his sons, not with an eye for accusation, but from a tactical consideration. For he must have known that mere rivals had never stopped to venter. What if he said about creating peers and none of this was an accident? How then fared Isareth, Evryon, and Verald? The head of Madame Snappy Snips. <laughs> Mascotte of Le Masque du Lion. Named in jest, but genuinely respected the Grand Mam, as she's now called, and the last dragon brought down by Sir Koenig, the previous owner of the cafe. A spirited hunter, Koenig came out of came of age in the years following the sighting that named the era. While others were quick to assume the tales of ancient Navarran dragon hunters must have been exaggerated, he tracked the gradual increase in dragon numbers and size. Koenig believed we had yet to see a true return of the beast of legend, and that the specimens of his day were young despite their ferocity. It is a cruel victory, but today we know Sir Koenig to have been correct. Even as he may have fallen to his own expertise, he is, was, years overdue from his last hunt. And, for the rest of us, travel weary. What we thought to be the pinnacle of dragon... Oh, what we thought to be the pinnacle of dragon strength may have been closer to adolescence. The sisters of the Madam Snappy Snips may have left their sibling far behind. I actually can't wait until we fight a dragon of some kind. I think that is going to be unreally... Like, that's just going to be great. What does this guy sell? Open? Uh, yes, as open as I can be. Uh, if you have a need for the well cut or the sparkling. Look, um, first thing we can do... Oh, we actually don't even have any valu valuables to sell. He's got a couple of accessories. Plus one extra tonic. It's not a bad idea. Maybe grab an extra potion. Of non-healing potions. Okay. I wonder why I would ever buy some of those valuables from him. At least we can like everything is normal. Yes. This victory must please you greatly, Sika Cassandra. We came here seeking only to speak with the mothers. This is not our doing, but yours. And you had no part in forcing our hand? Do not delude yourself. Now we have been shown up by our own Templars, in front of everyone. And my fellow clerics have scattered to the wind along with their convictions. Just tell me one thing. If you do not believe you are the Maker's Chosen, then what are you? Look, I can help, I'm sure. Someone who can help close the breach and end this madness. That is more comforting than you might imagine. I suppose it is out of our hands now. We shall all see what the Maker plans in the days to come. So, do you know how many Templars have rebelled? How many Templars turned on the Chantry, exactly? <laughs> they rebelled across Thedas. Some remained loyal, but not enough to call them the Order. The White Spire here in the capital was the largest garrison, but now it stands empty. Perhaps more shall flock to the Lord Seeker's banner now. How far has faith waned, I wonder? How do you think your people are handling this? How are people responding to all of this? Despair. Fear. We mourn her holiness. The people look to the sky and wonder how long before terror comes for us all. There must be a way through this. Is it you? The Templars? The Maker's will? We abandoned our duties. We servants of the faith. Now we can only pray. And you don't believe that I'm the Herald of Andraste, do you? You're obviously skeptical. What do you believe I am? Our Divine. Her Holiness is dead. I have seen evidence for everything. Except what would comfort me. That doesn't answer my question. For you to be true, a great many things must be false. And if you are false, 
a great many things <laughs> must have failed. Like she's got a serious Think point though. Ahead, whatever your intentions. So what happens now? Will the Chantry continue to denounce me? <laughs> we have already done so. And what good has it done us? Now it falls on us to select a new divine, if we can. And leave the next step to her. Provided such a selection is even possible. I truly don't know. Any revered mother who could have followed Justinia died at the Conclave. What becomes of us and your Inquisition is in the Maker's hands now. So, uh, are the Templars gone from here completely? Where is the Lord Seeker taking the Templars? I can't begin to guess the Lord Seeker's mind. He could not have abandoned his intended role more completely. There must be sense to what we can't see. Must there? Rebellion seems popular in certain quarters, doesn't it, Seeker? Is crafting the Templars into a new power really any worse than declaring a rival to the Chantry itself? So, what do you want him to do? What were you hoping the Lord Seeker would do exactly? Put aside his war against the mages and find common purpose against something much more dire. Obviously, he has other plans. With the knights vigilant slain at the Conclave, there is nothing more we can do. Perhaps there is something we can do. I'd like to believe that, Seeker. I truly would. I suppose we can expect renewed effort against the mages from him, and yet more chaos. Well, I am going to try. There's got to be a way to calm everything down and clean up this mess. I hope against hope that may be the case. Difficult time for those who have lost. While I understand concerns for propriety and the general dressing of the bazaar, I must caution that release is needed. We are suffering not just ongoing civil conflict, pitting brother against sister, not just outright war, pitting Templar against mage, and not just loss of our most holy and the best of our leaders. We are suffering all three, as the sky is wounded for all to see. All we know of our world is threatened, all along with all we know of the next. With the most grave notation, I ask the writs of losses and missing remain. That the citizens, however, indirectly be allowed to post their griefs of known dead in the names of hopefully living, and with them their criticisms of how they've been told or not told. For while I have no doubt, as we as Orlesians will maintain our utmost composure, there must be release. There must be grief. There must be mourning. If not, if we do not allow this simple expression, we risk a greater outburst. Let our people shed their tears in a reserved uh, as means, a reserved as a means as necessary. The market will be cleared in due course, but this day, this time, we must let the simple expression stand. Reservoir stocking evaluation: tremors, floating, taste is off, water birds die off, restocking failed, fish not fit, do not consume. Okay. Well, that's... I'll take that for sure. Okay, so we have pretty explicitly stayed in Storm, and I see no reason why we shouldn't continue. We could go Exploding Bolt. 200% for every creature within 4 meters. That could be pretty massive. Fill the area with sympathetic magic. Each basic attack shortens your active cooldown times. The more magical energy you expend, the more damage your spells do. 5% for every 10 missing mana. Oh, that's kind of cool. I think I'm going to grab Energy Barrage. A salvo of elemental blast from your staff that homes on a target ahead of you. Yeah, let's grab it. Do we... Oh, we have to, I see. Right. 
Key lifted from drunks worrying about Harold. Don't know what door. I'm out. My debt is paid. Hmm. Where's the upper market from here? Sorry, we just had a little crashy poo there. We are back. And uh, we're gonna try and head up. Although I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna happen just yet. No, I did not see him. The report was Here we go, maybe. We locked out. I need to get up there somehow, but how do we get into the upper market exactly? Is another question. these guys tell me how to get anywhere? Some areas have multiple levels. Oh, okay. So this is traveling within. Yes. Okay. Interesting. There must be something here. The season of the four a fool. At this window, the thief Treadwell did witness the attempted assault of Lady Castine. He surrendered his chance for escape to catch and hold her assailant, a bard of Lord Hal... Halvine? Or Halvine? Or Halavine? Hero thief foiled... Uh, hero thief, foiled bard, and conspiring noble were all censured as per their station and relevant action. Lashings and labor disappeared and ostracized for the social season, respectively. The scandal played out far longer in the theatrically serialized adaptation, which reimagined the three as siblings separated at birth, competing for Lady Castine's hand at her orchestration. The conclusion was relatively accurate to the original event, save the punishment of the thief and noble being swapped to comic effect. Generally, good reviews received, though some thought the height of the lady's hair to be unrealistic. Wow. Here we go. Uh, so, a scrap of parchment is hastily torn from an ornate document, stuffed into its hiding space with a large red sock. And he... and we are to obey well. To meet at three bells to discuss how best to serve the new way. Scrawled below in a misspelled script. Herald go at time. Praise Andraste. Well, they said Andrast, Just like how I used to pronounce it. Taken together, the messages reveal a time, path, and a key to a location on the world map. And where is this? Secluded courtyard? Oh, that's interesting. That is very interesting. Travel to the hinterlands with Solus. Primal for Red Lyrium deposited. Use a world map to attend the salon. Friend of Red Jenny. Okay. Well, um, tell you what, we're gonna take a little break here. We'll see if we can figure out how we can actually connect to the bottom. I actually don't think we can. I think we can only fast travel between, uh, this point and anywhere else, which is really interesting that that is the case. I guess it's pretty large, but, uh... Yeah, I've never experienced that. That's weird. Okay, thank you guys very much, and uh, we'll see where this takes us from here. Technically, we're just going downstairs, so 
we know where that's taking us. 